So today we're going to be working on Spectre. It's a 1998 Honda Civic EX. The speedometer is not working right. It's working intermittently and we've already changed the vehicle speed sensor. This points directly to the gauge, the gauge motor, or something in the gauge itself. First let me show you where the vehicle speed sensor is and the part that you should probably replace first before doing this. Right down here in front of the battery below the air cleaner is where your vehicle speed sensor is going to be. There's the vehicle speed sensor there with the one plug and the one bolt holding it in. That should be your first go-to if you ever have speedometer issues with your Honda Civic. But if replacing that didn't help, it's going to be a part of the gauge. That's what we'll cover today. Okay, so the process for removing the gauge cluster on these is pretty simple. I always like to drop the steering wheel down. And then you've got a screw here and a screw over here which you can use a stubby Phillips head to get to pretty easily. One. And when you do that, this bezel pops out. You just pull it down from the top. And there's clips that pop out from the bottom. You can set that out of the way. Here's where the clips go in here and here. So now you're looking at, there's Phillips heads, one there, one there, and then there's one there and one on the other side. So four in total, you take that out and you can just flip it forward. For the top two, stubby screwdriver works perfectly. For the bottom two, we're gonna need a longer Phillips head. Now that we've got it loosened, we can just pull it up towards the front. Want to make sure to get these top two pieces here and here clear of the top vinyl first, and then you can just pull it straight out. There's some electrical connectors on the back. They're just pinch and pull. The green one and two blue ones. And then there's another green one and a yellow one. You just disconnect those. You just kind of maneuver it out like that. All right. Now we've got our gauge cluster. Let's go take this thing and put it on the table and fix it. So here's our gauge cluster and here's our donor part. So this is a speedometer and common failure points on these is there's a circuit board on the back of them which can occasionally get um, cracks in the solder. But more commonly is actually the motor in the back of this that actually moves the speedometer needle is actually usually the culprit for these. So that's what we're gonna be replacing today. We're gonna take the motor out of the donor and put it in here and we're gonna keep our mileage and everything the same. Okay, so first things first, when we go to take apart the gauge set, there's these little clips that go all the way around. One here, one here, one here. One here, one there, one there, and here. You want to get the clear off first, because the clear comes off, then the, the black part, and it all comes off of the white part. So you have to do them one at a time. So you just kind of push and lift on each one of these tabs, and you pull the front off. Okay, now we got the clear part off. Now we got to get the black part off. So we'll just do the same process. Push these clips in, pop this off. You'll have to unhook this bulb when you go to taking the black part off because it hooks into here. Okay, so we got the clear piece and the black piece off. Now we're down to the face, which the face just lifts straight up. You gotta get it unhooked from these two posts. And then this piece comes straight up. So there's our cover piece. And now we're in the gauges. So to get this gauge out, or any of these for that matter, you have to disconnect the screws on the back of the gauge cluster. So there's these four, these three, 
and then these three if you were to take one of the gauges out you'd have to remove those screws so we're going to remove these four for the speedometer and get the speedometer out and then we'll start working on replacing the parts okay so that's good and now we can just lift the speedometer directly out so I can just grab this post, the reset post, and the top. It comes straight out. Alright, we'll put the gauges to the side for the second. Okay, now we have our two gauges. It's important to note before you go to get up and get any tools or anything, what your mileage is on yours so that you can return the counter to the correct parts. So, 143 is my original. And 223 or 233 is the donor. Okay, so here's both the speedometers. So, first thing we want to do is I'm going to first off take apart the, the speedometer from the car, the one that's broken that I know of. Um, first thing we're going to need to do is there's two small screws up top on the face, and there's also the needle we're going to have to remove. So to remove the needle, you just very carefully pull straight up. Sometimes it's that easy, sometimes it's not. It is not going to be that easy today, I don't think. I'm going to get my flathead and very carefully put it here and turn. The needle broke. Good thing that's why we always get spares. There we go. Ow. Yeah, that one was rough. Okay, to make sure that I'm going to have a needle, I'm going to take the other one and do the same with it, except for without breaking it. Ah, damn. This model's a whole lot more stubborn than the 92 to 95s, I can tell you that right now. There. Okay, so for this one I had to get up underneath where the plastic piece goes onto the shaft of the motor and I had to directly pry it with a, uh, a small flathead. That was a lot harder than it should be. Hopefully you've got better luck than that when it comes to taking these apart. Those were on there. I've never ran into ones that were that tight. Okay, so moving on. There's our old gauge. We've got a needle now, so we're going to go ahead and take these screws off of the face. Okay, we got those, and the face will just come right off. So here's your counter, basically your trip meter and your odometer and all that good stuff this is your maintenance indicator down here got the circuit board on the back there's spots for four screws one here one here one here and one here those are the screws that go through the actual gauge assembly into the back this is now disconnected from the rest of the unit so we could pull it off now looking at the back of this there's like a white powdery speckly thing going on it's a little dirty. This could probably be cleaned up with a toothbrush and reused, but I'll do that later because I'm going to use the board off the other one because it looks much better. So we just pull this straight off and you get this little circuit board here. This is the part that's usually the culprit is this little motor right here. So this one in particular is held in by two Phillips heads, one here and one here. And that should get us access to that motor. Alright, so we've got those screws removed. It should pull straight out, just like that. Alright, so here's the motor. Usually I can tell if something's wrong with these motors just by looking at them. Um, and nothing super obvious sticks out about this. If I had to guess, because this one's shiny. There's no rust in it. It looks perfectly fine. The coils look fine. There's nothing that appears to be cosmetically wrong with it. So if I had to guess, it's got to be this board. I think it's the corrosion on this board. 
but to be safe we're gonna look at the other parts and see their conditions but I'm gonna go and get the little motor out of a 92 to 95 gauge cluster and show you what a definitely bad one looks like so this particular part was what was wrong with uh, Ember our 95 Honda Civic this motor on the inside is rusted all the way around it's like dark brown and then there's some like rust pitting and stuff around the actual housing this one's definitely bad and this was the culprit in that car so I don't think it's gonna be this motor because this one looks fine. I'm starting to think it's the board. So let's take the other one apart and we'll see what we have to work with. Okay, now we can take the face off of this one, put it to the side. Now we get the board off. This board looks substantially better. There's no powdery white all over it. It looks good. So we're going to separate that. Yeah, this board overall just looks better. So we're gonna use this board that's a good board these usually have dates on the back of the motors so this one's got 1997 on it this one's got 1998 so I'm gonna use I'm gonna take this motor off and look at it and if this motor is in good condition then I'll use this one over the 97 that way we have a matching board and a matching uh, motor just for the hell of it Okay, yeah, uh, this one looks really, really nice. So, about the same as the other one, but still really nice. So this this motor, this donor motor, and this donor board, I'm gonna pair together. You don't have to. Uh, you can mix and match this all day and it wouldn't matter. Uh, but I want to, just for consistency, I wanna have the 98 parts together. So that's actually kind of fitting. <laughs> because the car is technically a 98 even though it's made in 97 so it'll match so now i'm gonna pile up my spare parts in a corner so we don't get these mixed up what we're gonna be looking at is the the 143 stock odometer set from the 97 made gauge the 1998 board, 1998 motor, and the 97 cover, and the 98 needle because I was an idiot and broke the other one. So putting this together, first we're gonna get our motor. We're gonna put our motor back in. All right. Okay, so our motor's back in. We're gonna take our board we're gonna hook our board in there's you can tell how you put your board back on because there's four connectors here arranged in a pattern and then there's four connectors across the top and then you have corresponding pegs on the board so you just get those lined up and it pushes right in holds in with tension so now we'll take the gauge face and put it on just like so So gauge faces back together now before we put this needle back on you may think oh well we can just throw the needle on stick it back in the cluster and rock and roll uh, not the case unfortunately um, you have to calibrate it so basically when you put this back into the gauge cluster you have to hook the gauge cluster up in the car without the front on it and then you have to turn the ignition on and when you turn it on it resets the motor to this to zero so when you when it does that then you have to stick the needle back on and then you're calibrated so we've got to put this back into the gauge cluster first we'll just lower her in there nice and easy now we've got to get the screw secured back into the back of the gauge set i just hold the gauge in with one hand and screw the screws in with the other So everything's fastened in we've got the gauge together now we can come in and we can put our face on here pop 
gaps in the place. There we go. Now the gauge face is on. So we can put this all the way back together except for the clear part. Alright, we just press around even until it all gets back together. Make sure to hook that light back up. So everything's hooked back up the way that it needs to be to be an assembly. We just have the clear part that's left and the needle. So we need to go take this, hook it back up in the car, turn the car on, put the needle back on, and then hook the uh, clear back on. We've got it hooked up. It doesn't have a face or a needle. We're just going to turn the car on. Now what that did is that set the needle back at zero. It should hold it there at zero too. So that should be good. We're going to press the needle down. I think I may be off slightly. I'm going to get this dialed in by hand. Okay, so I learned the hard way. You want to very lightly put the needle on to calibrate it before you fully commit and push it on with your finger. Because I had to take the gauges completely back out put them on the table to get that needle off. I went back over to the 2000 Civic just to check and yeah you have to when you turn the key it should not move from zero so we'll have to calibrate it directly at zero. I will try to get this on camera as good as I can. Okay. Alright, I have very lightly put it on. Cool. Well, it's not moving from zero. Now when you do this, you should be able to put it anywhere on the gauge and it jumps back to zero. Of course it's doing it over there because it's over there, but you should be able to, no matter where this is at, yep, jumps back down to zero. So that's where we want it. Now that we know that that's calibrated, we can push it in now. Now that that's done, we can put the clear casing back over the gauges. Also, you want to make sure that don't push the needle down too tight or it'll scrape against the gauge. You want it to where it's nice and loose to where it can go wherever it needs to. All right. And we can very carefully, you have to get it over the mileage counter first. Okay. Everything has popped back in. I can start screwing it back in. Okay, so now we can put our cover plate back on. You're going to be careful when you put it back on because you want the lower clips to line up, but you also want to get it under where the reset for the odometer is. You have to get under the odometer reset, clip the clips in, and then the top will duck in just fine. Just like so. And there's two clips on the bottom of the odometer that that clips into. Everything mounts flush perfectly. So here's what it should look like. And all that's left is to put those two screws back in. There we go. Now we take it for a test drive. Because before, it wouldn't read speeds until later on in a trip. So we need to test that. All right, moment of truth. And the needle moves. And shift smoother. Now the computer can see where its speed is. All right, so that is how to repair a speedometer on a 96 to 2000 Honda Civic if it's not your vehicle speed sensor. If you watched and this helped, please hit the like button. It helps me a lot. It helps the algorithm pick up my channel.
I hope this helped and hope you enjoyed. That's all for today.